Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ. Today I wanna to talk about bluegills or brim, whatever you call them, and literally one of the best bass fishing patterns that's gonna happen throughout the entire summer. Stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. All right guys, this video is brought to you by the bass hat. This hat I'm wearing now with a unique wooden bass patch on the top. Click the link below in the description and you can check that out and greatly help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel. Now, I wanna talk about bluegill today because we're getting ready to get into a season where you're going to have bluegill that are spawning and guys, this is one of the best patterns to catch big bass throughout the entire summer and a lot of guys don't really take advantage of it. Okay. So if you guys have been watching um, some recent Bassmaster events, for instance, on Lake Fork and even here on Lake Gunnersville, which they're fishing this week, you have a lot of guys that are fishing around bluegills and more specifically around bluegill beds or brim beds. Again, no matter what you call them in the north, it seems like we call them bluegills. Down south, y'all call them brim for whatever reason. I guess that's not really important, but bluegill or brim, no matter what, guys, finding bluegill beds can not only help you to catch big bass, but it can really help you to win tournaments come summertime. Bass and bluegills bed differently. There's typically several waves of bass that come up depending on where you live in the country. I would say between March, April, and May are kind of your big months for bass that are spawning. Now, bluegill are a little bit different. Throughout the summer, typically on full moons, you're gonna have different waves of bluegill that are moving up and bedding. And this will happen throughout the entire year, you know, starting in, in May and going through May, June, July, August, you're gonna have bluegills that actually come up during the full moon and make these beds. Finding these beds can be difficult and easy. And what I'm gonna say is that Bluegills don't really have a really specific area where they bed. For instance, I have found bluegill beds that are on main lake structures in six and seven foot of water. And you also are gonna find bluegill beds that are back in creeks and small pockets. There's no real rhyme or reason to where you're going to find bluegill beds. But one of the biggest things is they do like protected water. So if it's on a main lake area, typically you're gonna have some sort of grass surrounding that area, maybe some bigger boulders or rocks, something that helps keep that bluegill bed a little bit more protected. And then you will find bluegill beds on secondary points and main lake points and back in pockets. Again, there's no real rhyme or reason, but the good thing about finding bluegill beds is that most of the time you can see them with your own eyes. Now, like I said, a bluegill bed is hard to find because they can be anywhere and easy to find because you can literally see them with your own eyes. Simply by going down the bank, you're gonna see a very unique pattern on the bottom. And this is going to be a bluegill bed. Literally guys, it looks like a honeycomb. That's the best way to explain it. It looks like a honeycomb. There's gonna be beds grouped up all around each other. And once you see them, typically you're gonna be able to tell real quick if there's actually bluegill on them because the bluegills typically sit right there in the middle of the bed. They're not gonna move too much. You will see them kind of disperse here and there. And a good thing is, is that a lot of times you can actually find the bass by visually seeing them too. But guys, I think it's extremely important to know that just because you found a bluegill bed doesn't always necessarily mean that there's going to be bass around that bluegill bed. You may have to find 10, 15, 20 bluegill beds before you find one that has some bass on it. But the thing is, is typically when you find one that has some bass on it, there might be multiple big bass there in a really small confined area and it's really pretty easy to catch them once you find the bluegill beds that have bass on them. Another really important thing to know about bluegill beds is how bass are going to relate to them. You're not typically going to see bass right in the smack dab center of a bluegill bed. Typically the bass just kind of like to hang on the outskirts of the bluegill bed. If there's any type of cover, like I said, whether it's grass or maybe there's a dock that's right real close to that bluegill bed, that bass is gonna try to hang in the shadows just on the outskirts of that bluegill bed, trying to get in a position where they can shoot up, grab a bluegill, eat it, and then be done. If I know that the bluegill are bedding, if I start to see a couple of beds, then I'm gonna start looking specifically for this. I'm gonna start running the bank, I'm gonna start 
paying really close attention to see if I can find these bluegill beds. And the way that I like to do it is I'm just gonna run down the bank and I'm gonna mark every time I see a bluegill bed. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna GPS coordinate a bluegill bed. So I might spend a couple of hours actually trying to locate the beds without even trying to cast to the beds themselves. After I locate 10, 15, 20 of these beds, then I'm gonna come back through and I'm gonna start fishing them. Now guys, if you are fishing a tournament and you're trying to locate bluegill beds, sometimes you don't even need to catch bass on a bluegill bed to know if there's bass there because a lot of times you will actually visibly see the bass just hanging on the outskirts of those bluegill beds as well. So you'll be able to just visibly see, okay, there's a three pounder, there's a four pounder, there's a seven pounder, whatever it may be. And then that way during the tournament, you can come back and just start fishing that bed that you know there's bass sitting there. Now guys, there's a lot of different lures that are going to work really well around bluegill beds. I'm gonna tell you four that I think are the best lures that you can use. And I'm gonna start off with some sort of topwater bait. As you can see here, I actually have a wake bait. This is one that's not produced anymore. But the good thing is a new company, Fish Lab Tackle, is making almost the exact same bait. Guys, you need to check out this particular bait. I'm gonna link everything that I'm talking about in the description below so you can check out these things. But this is a wake bait very similar to the old Strike King Wake Shad. Guys, a wake bait is a great bait to use around a bluegill bed. Now again, when I am actually targeting bluegill beds, and I've probably said bluegill beds a thousand times in this video, and I'm sure someone's gonna comment below, drinking game, every time he says bluegill bed, take a shot. Please don't do that, because you will be drunk. All right, on to the video. Again, one of the best places to actually catch bass on a bluegill bed is around the outskirts. So that is where I'm gonna target all the lures that I'm gonna talk about. So one of the first ones that I'm gonna pick up is a wake bait like the one that I got here. This is gonna work really really phenomenally and it's one of the most exciting ways to actually catch fish. Now another bait that I like to use and I talked about this in a different video but is a bluegill glide bait like the one that I got here. This is gonna sink down a couple feet below the surface and this obviously looks exactly like a bluegill. Like this is the exact shape this literally mimics a blue yell spot on. You're gonna kind of slow roll this and, and make this bait just kind of dart back and forth on the outskirts of that bluegill bed. And this is gonna be some of the craziest strikes from fish. A lot of times you can visibly see this, so be careful not to set the hook too early. Make sure you feel that fish load up before you set the hook. Now another bait that is one of my favorites around bluegill beds is just your simple swim jig. And I'm gonna dress up the swim jig just like this. I am gonna use a green pumpkin swim jig. As you can see here, I have just dyed the tips of these tails just a little bit chartreuse. I mean, this looks exactly like a bluegill coming through the water. The thing about this bait, as opposed to the ones with treble hooks, is that this is going to have a little bit better hookup to land ratio, which is definitely what we want, but sometimes, it's just fun to throw those little bit bigger wake baits and glide baits and catch them that way. But if you want to have a little bit better hookup, this is a phenomenal bait. Now, the, the fourth bait that I'm going to throw, and this does the cleanup job, right? If I can't catch them on anything else, just your good old Cinco style bait. Whether you're going to rig it wacky style or Texas style like the one that I got here, guys, this is going to work phenomenally well. And again, I'm fishing it on the outskirts of the bluegill bed. I don't wanna fish it in the middle of the bluegill bed. One, because there's no bass really there. And two, the bluegill are going to hit your baits if you're casting right in the middle of their bed. And it's just constant, you know, machine gun bites on all the different baits that you have. Guys, I hope you understand how critical it is to find these beds. The best thing about fishing bluegill beds is that guys, once you kind of find the areas where these bluegill beds are happening, you will actually be able to go back to these throughout the entire year and for years to come because a lot of times bluegills are gonna bed in a certain area for a certain reason, whatever that reason may be, they're gonna be there and those beds are gonna be there year after year after year. I hope everything makes sense. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please comment below if you have a question and please subscribe. Don't forget to check out those bass hats. I'll see you guys in the next video.